Caddis Maximus here. This time we're reviewing, comparing, and talking about fish tape or cable snake. A lot of people are familiar with this particular tool, have seen them in use, and uh, many of you have probably been frustrated by this type of tool. We have a few different versions here from a few different manufacturers. They're all name brand. We have Ideal, Greenly. We have the Hula Tape Master. They're the ones who actually make the Tape Master version of these cable snakes or fish tape. We have a smaller Ideal. These are all three or excuse me, eight one eighth inch. The Greenly is a fiberglass eighth inch. The Tape Master is a quarter inch, and then we have a little bit older GB or Garber bender that's in a metal spool, and we're going to talk about that too. So, fish tape, cable snake, these are all used for taking and drawing a piece of wire or cable or anything through a piece of conduit or any type of tight space. Now, these are commonly associated specifically with electricians for pulling wire through conduit, but these are used in any type of situation, automotive, a variety of industrial situations where you just need to fish something through some type of pathway that you can't physically fit your hands or arms into or over a great distance. These smaller ones are 50 feet. These mid-range ones are 100 feet. And then this big ideal is actually a 200 foot, but I damaged and broke some of the tape. Now it's about 150 feet. Now, these steel tapes are made out of hardened spring steel, and the reason they do that is not just for strength, but so they'll have enough rigidity so when you're pushing the tape through some kind of uh, conduit that it doesn't want to crumple up. The fiberglass tape isn't as strong, but since it's a much smoother surface versus the steel tape, it tends to work fairly well just because it doesn't have all the friction and you're able to push it through pretty easily. Now the other deal with fish tape is that many times you don't exactly, unless it's small wire computer networking or just a, a few power cables, you would then use the tape to actually fish through and pull the wire itself. But in many situations, especially with heavier wire, uh, there's too much friction to actually use the tape itself to yank onto, i.e. you take the tape, you tie the wire just to the little loop and then you try to pull it out with the tape. Many times you're using fish tape to actually, f from the starting point, you'll fish from the starting point to get a hold of a piece of, say, steel cable, which is much more flexible and strong, or a piece of rope. And then you pull that piece of rope through and then you would tie the wire or cable to that piece of rope or steel stranded cable and then use that to pull through because of the brittle nature uh, of the fish tape. Pulling straight on them is really, they're super strong, but when you start getting into tight bends or you have any kinks or you start twisting them, you can have some issues. Also talking about the technique, many modern types of fish tape have these handles, but this isn't for you to just un, well, excuse me, unspool. You always want to, when you're unspooling, pull by the actual fish tape or cable itself. And then when you're winding it up, you always want to have a good amount of tension and hold by the reel and actually turn via the actual the spool. And that prevents loose windings from building up. That's when they start getting tangled and potentially damaged. And what's actually pretty nice is on this tape master here, if we can see, there we go. The tape master actually has a pretty good uh, sticker, actually one of the best instruction stickers I've seen just about on any tool. And it gives you clear instructions on holding the, these fish tapes and then winding them, making sure you keep it under tension. And so, of course, what they mean is you just take and yank it out. They got into plastic because there's less friction and they're easier to use, even though these plastic housings aren't as strong. Uh, if you do drop these from a ladder or something like that, uh, a lot of times they'll break. And it's just the way it goes. But it makes them really smooth to pay it out. And then when you wind it up, you always grab a hold of this the reel and actually type, pull it back in. Another thing to point out, and I just noticed now, is that the ideals here don't have any windows in them. Pretty much all fish tapes have these windows in them so that you're able to easily see if you're getting close to the end or to the limits of your tape so you don't accidentally have it come off because it's a real unfortunate situation when the tape comes off uh, the reel while you're in the middle of a pull. Speaking of how easy those are to uh, operate with the new plastic bodies, here's an older version. This is a Garber Bender, 
and the this is how they used to be. You can still find some that are in the metal spools, but they seem to be getting rarer and rarer, primarily due to expense, I believe. And sometimes the metal spools can get a little funky if the wire gets sideways in there. Sometimes this can uh, end up getting bumped or pushed into the spool, and then it's a real adventure digging it back out. And of course, you can't take apart the metal spools because they're spot welded together. Although you can technically replace the wire in these because they do have a little notch here to hook them up. One nice thing about the metal spools is these instructions, like on the Tape Master, where you need to make sure to pull on the wire to unspool and then to make sure to use the reel itself to provide tension to re-spool it. The, this style, you're almost forced to use those exact techniques just to operate it. Because of the tension of these two halves, you really have to pull on the wire pretty strongly to get it to want to unspool. And then when you want to wind it back up, it takes quite a bit of force to actually get the wire to pull back into its little slot there, as you can see. And what's nice is it always keeps it really tight, and uh, I kind of appreciate that. Also, versus the more bulky nature, both of these here are 50-foot fish tapes, and as you can see, one is a heck of a lot bulkier than the other one, and is not going to be quite as durable as the metal spool one, so I do recommend the metal ones. That, and it's also really compact and much easier to use. I like the more rigid body of the metal one. And to tell you the truth, as far as an eighth inch fish tape, this is the one that I use the most because it just ends up being more convenient than these where they have these odd patterns inside, the extra diameter, which is harder to hold on to, the funky plastic handle, which seems to be the first thing it breaks when you do drop it. It's just so unfortunate that they're getting so hard to find. So now that we've talked about a few of these brands, let's get one of them off the table. Let's get these off the table here. Let's talk about the fiberglass fish tape. So the fiberglass fish tape, this is a Greenlee. This is a Textron company. And uh, after uh, a nice little comment about my mispronunciation of the word Torx regarding star bits, looked it up. Some people do say Torx for a while. Some of the bits are actually labeled T-O-R-X. And so that's where some of the confusion comes from. But the same company that made this, that owns Greenlee and made this spool is also the same company that invented the Torx fasteners, and it's actually fitting that they use Torx fasteners to put it together. This Greenlee is pretty expensive, but it's really nice. It's a 100-foot, 8-inch uh, fiberglass flex tape, or excuse me, fish tape. They use the advantage of the fiberglass fish tape, as I mentioned earlier, is it has a lot less friction actually in the pathway, in the conduit, or if you're doing a car stereo install, and pulling some wire that way. They're also electrically insulating. The tip is obviously not because it is a brass tip and it is replaceable, although you have to be careful because I've had this come partially unscrewed as I've been pulling with this and uh, it's always worried me. But aside from that, the big advantage is weight. This 100 foot fish tape weighs less than this 50 foot fish tape. It's actually surprising. And so that does make it easier. It's a lot easier to lug around if you're having to do a lot of work on, a, say, a commercial job. Uh, every pound less that you're carrying around is really that much more work that you can get done. You're not getting worn out quite as fast. The other nice thing I like about the Greenlee is I've complained about the handles breaking. As you can see, this handle is very oversized with many deep ridges. This handle actually might not break when you drop it, and it's surprising how oversized it is. And may, uh, um, these are always really easy to work with. The fiberglass fish tape is always just super nice. Sometimes they're nylon. There's a few things to really be careful of. One is that the, because it is fiberglass reinforced fish tape, it does like to get scratched. So if you have a sharp edge, it will shape, shave the tape, which can be unfortunate. The other issue is when it comes to a steel tape, if you accidentally bend it over too tight of a curve, like say over the edge of a piece of conduit, uh, you'll get some kinking, but you can still use the fish tape and it'll be good. This, if you bend it over too sharp of an edge, it will just snap. It also doesn't take quite as much pulling force. They rate this at 150 pounds of pulling force, which is quite a bit. But most situations, unless I'm pulling a very light duty or uh, a, pe a couple pieces of wire through conduit that's really open that only has a couple wires in it already, then I would pull using the actual fiberglass, but the fiberglass is 
more exclusively used for fishing it through and then tying a cable or rope and then refishing the rope through to actually do the hard pulling. Just because it can be easy to break these fiberglass fish tapes. But as far as like doing computer networking and that kind of stuff, telephone service, um, they really can save a lot of time because they're just so easy to push through. One nice thing about the fiberglass tape is it really wants to stay straight and seems to respond better, especially when you have, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet of this paid out uh, into some kind of uh, area. You can still put a lot of force on it and you can feel it pushing through where sometimes with the steel tape, you'll put out, you know, 15, 20 feet of it, hit some kind of burr or an edge or just something inside the conduit and it'll feel like the metal tape just stops, just jams up and you have to pull it back out and try again. Part of that's the loops that they have to make on the ends of these metal tapes for you to tie to, where this has a really small, compact, rounded point, which does help it feed. But you just have to remember that for that weight savings and some electrical uh, protection because the tape itself is non-conductive, uh, you do make some sacrifices for strength. And Greenlee does have some interesting safety instructions here, some of the more interesting um, points or do not exceed one person operation so they say don't have three four or five people pulling it on it at the same time which is kind of funny uh, you know make sure that uh, if the tape breaks that you're not going to trip over any objects uh, never force a pole that appears to be hung up which is always kind of funny because everything always hangs up a little bit and you have to give it a pull so that's always an arbitrary one uh, of course inspecting the tape using lubrication which can help a lot uh, this is where they talk about use it for fishing only, not to actually do forceful pulling. I've talked about that. Don't bend it sharply over conduit. And uh, don't use it on ladders, which is a generally good recommendation. Even though I was talking about that, inevitably there's many times uh, you have to use these on a ladder. But you usually set yourself up so you can be in a controlled situation. You have one way to you know, hold on to a secure surface just while you're fishing this through. And let's go and pull these off the table because I want to talk about, this was a big 200 foot long one. This was my nice big 200 footer. And I did indeed drop it and bust the handle clean off of it. And when that happened, the little piece of tape disappeared inside. So I had to take it apart. It was pretty cold. Um, and it ended up uh, breaking apart on me when I took it apart. So a couple of recommendations. One, since they are hardened spring steel, when it's really cold, they can be more delicate. So if this drops, you know, in freezing weather, there's more than just potential for the case to break. The actual spool or the, the wire itself can break apart inside. And when I took it apart, I just had a piece of wood over it. So I removed the screws, put the piece of wood, and then just lifted it up a little bit so that it would unspool itself. And that was a really bad idea. Use, allowing it to unspool with a really hard steel wire um, the wire would impact itself as it would uh, unwind and broke itself apart. And so what was a 200 foot spool, I end up, fortunately, the tighter coils around the inner inside were the ones that seemed to break, but I did end up losing about 20 feet of the fish tape, and that's something to be aware of. If you ever have to take them apart, you have to find an area like out in your driveway or garage or something to where you can manually pay it all out. Uh, so that you had, don't have that issue of it unspooling. And so this was the wire that was inside. You can see it's a deep blue hardened steel wire. It's extremely rigid. This piece that I have holding in my hands about 36 inches long, eighth inch wide, and less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. And it's so rigid that even hanging out more than three feet, it stays suspended. Just give me an idea of how hard that steel really is. So as this was unspooling, it would unspool and different parts of the wire would hit each other and that sharp impact would cause them to snap. I'm not exactly sure some of the other mechanisms, but maybe some of you know, but it was just something real surprising and it was real dangerous because when it unspooled, it made this big crashing sound and then all these long pieces of wire, some of these pieces were 10 feet long, came unspooling out and, and flying out. And so you just definitely need to be careful of that. But if it does happen, it's always handy to keep the shorter pieces of wire just so that you can use them as short pieces of fishing rod, basically. Also, one last point is getting these to bend. Oftentimes the tips, the little rounded convolutions that you tie wire to, do end up breaking. 
and when you try to bend a new tip on, it ends up breaking on you too because of how hard these are. What you really need to do, if you're the only thing you have is quote unquote a uh, pocket lighter, that's better than anything, and hold it on uh, about where you're going to put the bend for you know a couple minutes. If you have one of those little propane torches or one of those little torch lighters, those deliver heat much better. Uh, obviously, a propane rosebud would be optimal. Optimal, but the idea is you're just trying to get the metal to. Uh, as hot as possible, preferably glowing a little bit orange, just so you can anneal it and soften it up, and then you'll have a much easier time bending the tip. And so that's just a, uh, the one note or pointer there, is if the convolution breaks off, use a lighter or something to really heat up the new end of the piece of metal to get it to anneal, so that you can more successfully put a new tip on there without it breaking. I think that just about finishes up our talk about fish tape. And the various brands and styles that are out there and uh, wanted to make one last point is generally you don't buy a 200 foot tape just right off the bat because of the size and the weight that's why these 50 foot tapes are so common is because that's really fits most uh, fishing needs and then you don't have a lot of extra bulk and weight anyway I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do Caddis Maximus out Oh my goodness, I almost totally forgot. I had a little pointer here about when you do have a fish tape and you are in a situation where you have to use the tape to, to pull significantly or to, to actually yank the wire through. It's just the situation it is you have to save time. And the darn fish tape is stuck up on something and you just want to yank it. I have a couple quick pointers. One is if the tape is totally stuck, you can use Lyman's pliers. That's what I've... These jaws that are in the back of Lyman's pliers don't come together um, and I've been told one so that you can work with wire and use it as a puller and then they're also handy when you're using fish tape. So if the fish tape is stuck get some Lyman's pliers and just use that clamp that's on the back squeeze real tight and then now you have an ability to both hold pull via the handle and the head of the pliers pretty evenly and in a controlled fashion and that's the first tip is just to use a pair of pliers but rather than attempting to hold it like this, which is much more difficult, you don't have quite as much surface area and you don't have quite as much control, that's a good way to break the tape, just run the pliers through the handle and use the back jaw. That way the wire is perpendicular to the head and now you can use two hands in, on a wide surface and get a lot of pulling force. Most times that works. Sometimes it does not work. And let me get my piece of wire here. When that does not work and you're in a situation where you're going to pull it um, and if it breaks, it breaks and if it pulls whatever you need to pull, it pulls, the other option would be to use something like a, a cable pulling clamp such as this Klein. How these work is it's a cam system, you can see that moving up and down, and it has a hook eye hook on it. And so you would put the cable through or in this case we're using fish tape, you would actually clamp this onto the fish tape. Come on now. These things are always a little exciting trying to... There we go. You get it on, the fish tape on there like that. On this wide surface, this thing will... The tape will absolutely not slip. And then you find some kind of place to where you can anchor or even build a little structure so you can use a come along or a manual winch to pull on one of these things. And with this combination, you can uh, definitely break even a quarter inch fish tape. Uh, either way, you will be able to yank on it as hard as the, the tape is physically able, able, excuse me, physically able to take. And so I just wanted to point that out, is there are ways to grab a hold of this, these kind of things and really get a lot of pulling force, but you do need some kind of special tools. I believe this one is a Klein X, or excuse me, X, uh, 1619-30 and to give you an idea just this little clamp that's just a little eighth inch um, fish tape in there but this type of device even this small is rated for 1500 pounds of force so that gives you an idea you could apply uh, three quarters of a ton of pulling force if necessary using this setup and if you had a uh, big come along anyway that was the end of the addendum once again thanks for watching bye